Welcome to the Real Chili Podcast. And the Golden Eagles of Marquette University in Milwaukee are bound for the Final Four for only the third time ever. Five seconds left. Marquette down by one. Trying to avoid the upset. Blew the drive. The left hand. It's good. Every day, as basketball players, as students, and I want to win every day, most importantly, as people. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Real Chili Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Lavender. I'm joined by Pete Mohan and Pete Worth. And just the other day, Marquette came off its first win of the Big East season, a 76-66 win in Milwaukee over the Georgetown University Hoyas. A lot of positives from this game, but I I think the big picture frame we need to put on this first and foremost is that with a couple of small exceptions from start to finish, they played with character, they played with energy, and they had an identity that I haven't seen from a Marquette team since maybe at least since Buzz Williams uh, last coached. It was so promising to see them out there, and I think it was led by Marcus Howard. I think it was led by Juwan Johnson, and there were others involved too. But those two guys really keyed Marquette into a style of play that could, hopefully, develop into a signature style for Steve Wojciechowski. So overall, big picture, a very impressive win, and not to mention Pete Worth, a very important win for Marquette to get early in this Big East season when we're trying to make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and it was especially huge because it was at home and I believe the next two games are on the road, right, yep. at Seton Hall and at Villanova. So it was huge to get uh, this first win under our belts against a you know top 100 opponent. You know, Georgetown is not the greatest team in the world, and they're a, also a bubble team like us, but those are the games that you need to have in conference. And we came out on fire, really. We're able to weather the storm when they made their runs like you knew that they would inev- inevitably have. Yeah, and you mentioned it there that – Georgetown isn't the best of teams, and and I think for the past several years, and they brought up this stat during the game, that when Georgetown comes to Milwaukee, the games are always close. And I want to get to that a little bit later about what we think Georgetown actually is this year, because I think that's relevant in this conversation. But just starting off on on how good Marquette looked, Pete Mohan, what did you think of uh, Marcus Howard and Juwan Johnson kind of dictating this game from an offen- offensive standpoint for Marquette. I, I, it was impressive to see Marcus Howard just firing up shots in the first five or so minutes, and they were all going down. He looked supremely confident. I think that both guys, they were aggressive, but I don't think many of their shots were bad shots, you know? They were all pretty much taken within the rhythm of the game, and both guys looked comfortable on the offensive end. Juwan's game is always dictated by his defense, and he was he was at it again. How many steals did he have in this four, one? Four. Yeah. Oh, just four, just four more steals for Juwan. You know, and it, I mean, he feels like he's everywhere. And it's games like that when we're getting in the passing lanes and creating creating shots in the fast break that we're really at our best. And the other thing that Juwan does well, and that I thought everyone did well, and even the announcers were saying, it, is that we're doing a great job of getting to the rack. Our guards, while we know that they're proficient in their three point shooting. They've also been really good lately at attacking the rim and trying to draw free throws, either doing that or or drawing the defense in and kicking it to one of those open shooters. So I think that our, our offensive ability is predicated on our guards' ability to drive, and that was certainly on display. I think that this is a good barometer. You know, we were, we were curious what we would look like against a team of, you know, another one of those mid-range Big East teams. And we certainly looked like a very capable team against a Georgetown squad that has beaten some good teams and lost to some bad teams. So I don't think we're as mercurial as they are. We've been a pretty steady team beating the teams we should and losing to teams that we might might not be as good as or as experienced as. So we were the balanced team. We, were, we kept our heads and, and played strong the whole game, pull out this win. You look at the box score and you see Luke Fisher, eight points, Sam Hauser, five points, Hanif Cheatham, three points. And you look at that and you're thinking, where, where's all this scoring come from? And then, of course, Marcus Howard and Juwan Johnson both go for 20-plus. Um, I thought it was really interesting what you said, Mohan, about – this becoming more of a guard-centric team. I think entering the season and you go back and listen to some of our preview pods, and even even after that, 
uh, were highlighting Luke Fisher, his his high field goal percentage, him being one of the most talented players on our roster, that he needed to be the person who was driving this train. Now, clearly he's a leader in the locker room, but I think you're right in that we have the guards and we're seeing people step up where this is more of a guard-centric offense and we can get the ball than the Luke and he can do his thing from now and then, but we don't have to solely rely on him because other guys are stepping up. And that's a beautiful thing to watch. And it really came to fruition against Georgetown. I think at some point, one of you guys said, like, where's Luke? Yeah. Like, I don't think he's shut the ball yet. And I think that was either late in the first half or early in the second half. But, you know, one thing that I've come to realize about Luke is that he's never going to be an offensive force. You know, he's got some good post moves when he's got the ball with his back to his basket. He's never really shown that he can go out there and, and give you 15 points a game. You know, he, he relies a lot on, on dribble penetration and easy buckets when the defense collapses on our guards and also putbacks and rebounds. That was nice to see, and that's a nice for this particular roster that he can complement um, our bevy of shooters and that he doesn't need to go out there. Like, cause we kind of talked about it in the beginning of the year. Well, well, can Luke average 20 and 10? Um, he might have the skill to do it. If he tries, he it, just can't bang down low. It seems unlikely that he's going to be offensively, uh, an offensive force that we thought he could be. And so the bevy of shooters that we have is, is great to see and, uh, takes the pressure off of him to, to score those points. I think one thing for Luke that, and I'm sure you guys noticed this too, that really jumped out last night that he hasn't, that he did for the first time the other day against Georgetown, which I haven't seen a lot from him before, was those tip outs when when he, um, you know, trying to get a, a defensive rebound, couldn't quite get his hands around it, but he was able to swat the ball out to the half court or, or nearly half court to one of our guards. That you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me for that specifically. That got us at least two or three more possessions uh, than we would have otherwise had. And I think if you know, learning to play within the confines of this team, he doesn't need to be a twenty and ten guy for us to be successful. But to have those contributions where he can extend a possession or get another possession, uh, him representing the majority of our height. That's what he needs to continue to do. And, and another point on Luke Fisher, I was able to watch some of the film, and I think he he got better on his rotations on some of our defense, which I think was a weakness of his. I think he was one of the primary culprits in kind of rotating back on some of our defensive possessions. And I think he was a lot better in this Georgetown game on that. Yeah, he was very good at hedging on ball screens. I think he was a lot better at that uh, at this game without fouling. And I think you're right about those tap outs. Those really stuck out to me and as a team, you know, we've struggled with offensive offensive rebounds. We're 257th in the country at offensive rebound percentage. 26.9% of, of shots gone up. This last game, we were at 28.6, which is a little higher, but I think most of us would think of Georgetown as maybe a bigger team with more built to be a good rebounding squad than what we have. And the overall rebounding numbers last night, we lost the rebounding battle by six, which it's tough to win a game when you lose the battle, but to a, a big Georgetown team to only lose by six. They're big, yeah. They're big enough. That's that's pretty good. Well, and Georgetown kind of played into our hands, too, because it's like, how, how do you beat Marquette? One of the main ways to do it is by getting Luke in foul trouble, and they didn't really give the ball into Govan, who's skilled down there. He missed a couple easy shots last night that were I couldn't believe that he missed, but they didn't really get the ball into him. Like most of the time when he did get the ball it was on the perimeter. And the other time it was prior and, and peak and jacking up shots. And that's kind of Pete. I know you like to, to rag on JT three, which is, we, we all, we all like to do that. It's deserved. I hope you, I hope you do so more, but yeah, that was, that was a big mark on, on him last night by, by not um, exploiting that, supposed advantage yeah I don't I, I mean clearly Georgetown has some talented players you know there's some guys on their team that you're like man I wish wish that guy could add some size to our roster but yeah I don't think he uses the pieces maybe the way that he should and I know Mike in DC are a lot closer to their fan base I know that they've been kind of wanting him to be gone for a while now um what have you been hearing from those guys? Well, I will say that after the game last night, and I'm actually spending New Year's uh, with a few of these fellows, so I'll get, I'll get a deeper look. But the one text I got uh, after the game last night was, I'm going to go vomit. So, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Heading down to Vom Central Station, eh? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think rebounding is going to be a, a key. And, 
you know, can Marquette find ways to compensate for our short stature on the glass and still find ways to win? We did that in this Georgetown game. That's going to be a big problem against Seton Hall. But before we transition away and talk a little bit more about Seton Hall, I, I did just want to make you know, a couple of other points and kind of wrap up our discussion here on Georgetown. I think from a big picture team perspective, what a positive win that we can get this. You know, all of us have kind of been talking through text uh, quite a bit about what does our record need to be against which teams in the Big East. And Pete Mohan, you had an interesting idea. You know, I've thrown out there that, um, you know, against Villanova, Creighton, Butler, and uh, Xavier that we need to get at least three wins. Three wins would be tremendous. But, uh, you know, this was an important win in the Big East season, and it's really those 50-50 games. So against Georgetown, against Providence, against Seton Hall, those are the games that we need to show up at and really try to uh, get it, get in the win column because games against Villanova and those other ones that I've listed are going to be tough to come by. With the Big East as strong as it is this year, with the Big East non-conference uh, resume – being as strong as it is if we can go 11 and 7 in big east play i think that would safely get us in oh yeah maybe we'd be a nine seed or something like that but i certainly think that if we can get to the 11 and 7 mark and probably even 10 and 8 that we would be in do you think we have to uh go go anywhere in the big east tournament with that record i mean i think you you probably got to win your uh your first round game at least it depends on your rest of your record in the big east tournament yeah what i was telling mike is that one way to look at it would be you know you have your three bottom teams in depaul st john's and providence and, and Providence looked really beatable against Xavier the other day. And then you have Villanova, who's the number one team in the country. So Yeah, Providence lost by 26 to Xavier right. last night. And the other thing to mention, mentioning DePaul and Villanova is, wow, that Ooh. was a close game. Jeez. Uh, yeah, if you can go 6-2 and two against Villanova, St. John's, DePaul, and Providence, I think that you're in good shape if you go 500 against the rest of the teams because... If you sweep the three bad... And that gets us to 11-7? and seven. 500 against those teams, that's a win against Xavier, that's a win against Creighton, that's a win against Butler, too. Well, yeah, I mean, or it could be you lose twice to Creighton and beat, you know, Georgetown twice or something sure. like that, too. right. But I, I think that, you know, if, if you sweep the three bad teams, you put yourself in really good position to have a good record in the Big East, and... If you, if you maybe lose one of those games to one of those teams, which is certainly feasible, but you pick up a win against Villanova, you've also had a pretty, you've stolen a pretty good resume building win there as well. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but the Big East is certainly stacked. Well, you know, so kind of in this conversation of Georgetown not being very good, we've, it's difficult to grade how good of a good of a win this was for Marquette. And I think a lot of things went Marquette's way. Um, we looked good in a lot of different facets. But what happens when, uh, you know, JJJ, um, you know, has a couple of nice plays and we're on the road against Villanova and then he has kind of his characteristic couple plays where he turns the ball over and a team like Villanova or a team like Xavier or Creighton is able to capitalize on those and put us away. So I, I think it's something where if you're Steve Wojciechowski, there's so much there to build on. You need to continue to get these guys to lock in every single play. Uh, because that's what's going to be important when we go on the road against some of these teams, and even not some, uh, even some of the not so great teams. So much here to build on, and I hope and I think that's how Steve Wojciechowski is going to going to take it. Did you guys see the post game interview where Wojo asked Marcus Howard a question? I those two uh, seem like bros. They they uh, yeah, I, that was good. I, I think Wojo. I missed it. What did he ask him? He asked him if he was a better if he was a better basketball player or a better dresser. <laughs> because he had like a puffy vest on and apparently some torn, dark, skinny jeans, according to a friend of the podcast, Matt Velasquez. Oh, wow. Sounds pretty swagged out. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> also another thing about that post-game interview, my favorite part was Jawan Johnson. The second question asked of him was about Marcus Howard. And if he wasn't going to a Catholic school and uh, – and as student athlete in front of the, the microphones, he was about to say, fuck, that kid's awesome. <laughs> but instead he had to say, boy, that kid is good. Something like that. 
that. <laughs> anyway, that was my favorite part. What a what a game by Marcus. I mean, right off the get go, playing with poise and playing with confidence. He's just a. I mean, you can tell that Wojo likes him so much just because he because he's got a good head on his shoulders. I mean, he's only seventeen. He should he should be in high school. And he was a leader on that under seventeen USA team, and he's a leader. Almost, I would say he's bordering on a leader on this team. I mean, the kid is just the kid's a diamond in the rough that Wojo found, and Marquette is extremely lucky to have him. Yeah. The play to me that stood out that Marcus had was he came out of the game and and Rousey came in and Georgetown kind of made that first run to to get back to tide or near tide, and then Wojo put Howard back in, and the first possession they had, he drilled a three just to answer. And that put us like back up by five or something like that and uh, completely stopped that run that Georgetown was on. That shows the confidence Wojo has in Howard and the confidence that Howard has in himself to just come in off the pine and pour it in. That's an outstanding asset to have you know, on your squad. And one more, I'd like just to just add one more thing about old JJJ. I talked about it in the beginning of the year before the season started, how good of a progression he had coming up in the Big East tournament last year and the second half of the Big East schedule last year. And if he could become a reliable contributor, a game in, game out, we know he's going to be there, how big that was for us. And this game kind of proved that. I mean, a thing that about his game, that which we haven't mentioned and we, we haven't really talked about that much, is his passing ability. I mean, he had five assists last night. One was a, a beautiful dart pass to, to Haney, driving the lane for the and one. Oh yeah I that was amazing mm-hmm. yeah. and then also a little uh, wraparound or, or a, a kind of a dump off to Luke that was very pretty if he when he plays like that and, and he's playing his signature defense with getting in passing lanes and creating turnovers and getting easy baskets transition dunks and stuff there's no other player on Marquette's roster that is like him that can do the things that he can do and so when he's doing those things I mean, Marquette's an NCAA tournament team, in my mind, no question. Yeah, I mean, just his line from yesterday, 20 points, 5 boards, 5 assists, 4 steals, 1 block. I mean, yeah, let's go. That's filling it up. And good shooting percentages. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, as JJJ goes, this team tends to go because you look at his last kind of a clunk of a game against Wisconsin. He had 4 points three turnovers and three fouls. So JJJ, a pretty big indicator there. Following up on this first Big East Conference win for Marquette against Georgetown, Marquette will travel on New Year's Day to play Seton Hall. This is really one of those games. I had a chance to watch a little bit of tape on Seton Hall, not a ton. Uh, They're not dissimilar from Georgetown in that they have a lot of 6'7", 6'8", 6'10", guys that they can throw at you, probably most notably Delgado, who's 6'10". Um, reminds me a lot of that kid from Indiana, uh, Thomas Thomas Bryant. Thomas Bryant. Um, just body size make up an animal on the boards. I mean, unbelievable. Nationally ranked defensively and offensively. That's going to be a challenge for us. How do we defend him staying out of foul trouble at the same time? Another difference between Seton Hall and Georgetown is point guard play. Um, I, I think Seton Hall has the pieces there in the backcourt where they can take advantage of some of our def- defensive miscues, whereas Georgetown might not have necessarily been able to. So Seton Hall, interested to hear what you guys think. I think this is a winnable game, but it's a very losable game at the same time. They're they're certainly a good squad. You know, they lost a couple guys from last year, but they've had some decent wins this year. One thing that sticks out to me is that they do have a couple guys that can light it up from three. Uh, Kadeen Carrington's shooting 50% on 60 attempts, and freshman Miles Powell is shooting 36% on 72 attempts. So those guys can really chuck it. Carrington, he's 6'4", Powell, he's 6'2". So both of those guys have a little bit of a height advantage on our point guards and and some of our other smaller guards. So can we contest those three-point shots and, and make it difficult? And then the other thing is rebounding. I mean, they're a really good rebounding team. 54th in the nation in offensive rebound percentage. 53rd in the nation in uh, in deep in defensive rebounding. So they they do it well on both ends, and that's the kind of team that we can struggle with. Certainly, rebounding isn't our strong suit. Historically, we've allowed guys to get hot from the three point line as well. So nervous about those two things. With that said, I think that um, overall we're the more talented team, and it would be a great 
road win to pick up if we could. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game for sure. I mean, Delgado's a beast. Um, they also and Desi Rodriguez is a pretty good point guard. They're an exper- experienced team, and we're going to be on the road. They've already proven they can they can beat some good teams. Uh, like Pete mentioned, they got wins over South Carolina against Cal and at, at Iowa in a in a true road game. So and they're returning, you know, some of these players from the Big East tournament championship squad. So it's going to be a tough game to 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 get. I I think Marquette loses this game. I I, I think Seton Hall. We've struggled with them. We especially struggled with them last year, if I recall, and two big losses. I think we're going to struggle with them again. I think they're going to be too confident at home, and uh, and, and we're not going to be able to pull this one out. So one of the things that I think could be an X factor in this game, and and we didn't quite cover it I think and give it its due diligence earlier was the um, kind of what I said from the top the the character and the identity that we had against Georgetown and I think some of that's contributable towards the fact that Georgetown just probably isn't as good as we thought they were but also I think Marquette really is figuring out who they are we've had some transfers there's been some tough losses uh, there's a lot of new faces and I think you know this this many weeks this many months in they're starting to sift it out if they can play with the defensive effort and you know Wojo said this really interestingly in his post-game interview he said for the first time this season uh, when our backs were against the rope and, and there was a scoring lull in the second half we didn't revert to bad defense we kept coming back with good defensive possession after good defensive possession that to me is really important right there because that says that's a mature that's a maturing team that can not make a bucket, can, can see the ball not go through the basket, and co- can come back down on the defensive side and still D up just as strongly as they need to. If we can do that against Seton Hall, I don't, I don't think that's going to win us the game, but that's going to give us a shot. And hell, with, uh, with the way we shoot free throws when we can get to the line, that can keep us in a lot of games as long as we can play possession, possession, possession with some defensive in- intensity. One interesting thing um... – it's turning the ball over. Seton Hall, they turn the ball over quite a bit, actually. They're 200th in the nation in turnover percentage. As you guys well know, we're pretty effective at turning the ball over for other teams. 17th in steals. There you go, right there. And I think what we've hammered on in the past, this season, is that we're at our best offensively when we're generating generating a lot of easy shots off of steals and on fast breaks and things of that nature. If we can capitalize on their sloppy ball handling, I think that that could be one of our keys to victory. The other aspect is something that I've been harping on throughout the season. We're an excellent free throw shooting team. We need to try and make try and get points at the free throw line if we can. We're number 2 in the nation in free throw percentage. Just a scotch behind Notre Dame. And last game we did a really good job, 14 out of 17 against Georgetown, uh, a bigger team that probably doesn't have to guard by fouling a lot against us since they were bigger than us, but we were able to generate 17 free throws against Georgetown. You know, making 14 out of them, that's basically right at our season average. So how do we do that? How do we replicate that against Seton Hall? I think we need to continue to use our ball fakes on the three-point line and get into the teeth of the defense. Some of our guards have started to do a lot better job of shielding the ball, I, th- I noticed that Marcus does a really good job of shielding the defender to get the shot up over him because he's short. Hanif can do that. Uh, he's struggled a little bit with it lately, but um, I really w- would like to see those guys continue to use that ball fake effectively, get into the paint, and draw free throws or finish. Seton Hall's good. They're big. They're talented. They're good rebounders. They're good defensively, most important. I think we're going to struggle to move the ball against them. I think it's going to be tough to to get in the lane and penetrate um, I think they're going to stifle us out a little bit. One thing I will say is that if we can get them, if we can get them to the line, and one thing is if Dwayne Wilson is healthy, if he's able to go against Seton Hall, that's another body we can throw out there and um, cause uh, create some havoc and 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 maybe rough them up a little bit, get them to the line because they're 331st in the country in free throw percentage, which is god awful. So I think that's one way in which we can uh, we can squeak out a victory. All right, folks, there you have it. Coming fresh off Marquette's first Big East victory this season, they will head to Seton Hall to face off against the Pirates. Predictions? Predictions, yeah. Uh, Pete Mohan, who do you think comes away with this game? I think we actually end up winning this game. I think we can carry over the momentum from the Georgetown game uh, pretty well. I don't know how loud it's going to be in the Peru 
Uh, it's a 4.30 game on New Year's Day. That's like prime New Year's hang, like hangover headache zone, 4.30. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. I just don't know how loud those pirates are going to be. They, they won't be as surly as they normally are, that's for sure. A little too much rum the night before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's that true home court advantage, maybe, of some other uh, venues in this game that I think we can take advantage of, especially if we take the crowd out of it early with our three-point shooting and turning over Seton Hall. I think the rebounding will be a tough task, and, and that'll be sort of what keeps this game close. But um, I like Marquette in this game by five. I love I love the hangover factor. I think that's absolutely a thing. That'll be interesting to see. Pete Worth. I'm not as bullish on our chances as, as you guys are. Seton Hall is going to be desperate for a big win coming off a loss uh, in their Big East opener against Creighton. This will be their first home Big East game. I think they're going to come out uh, and play pretty well and kind of stifle us defensively. I think it will be close. I think we'll shoot the ball well enough to to keep it close like we've done in um, almost every game this year. But I think Seton Hall is going to be too good at home, and uh, I think I'm going to go with Seton Hall by six. So I watched the uh, a replay of Seton Hall playing Rutgers, which was a, just a bad life decision in general. <laughs> uh, and Seton Hall didn't score for the first five minutes of the game. They looked they looked off. Delgado had no touch around the rim. They couldn't get anything to fall. I don't think that's going to be the case against Marquette. I think I think they're going to be able to get baskets. I think they're going to be able to get into the lane with their size. I think they're going to get some of our guys in foul trouble, and I think we're going to have a situation on our hands with rebounding. The only thing that could offset that is if we light it up from three-point range, like we have been for much of the season. I think that's clearly what's kept us in several games to this point. If Marcus Howard, Caton Reinhardt is another bellwether, um, and Andrew Rousey can have a nice evening uh, from the line, uh, from the three-point line, then I think we're going to be in, in, in pretty good shape. But I don't ultimately think it's going to be enough uh, for Marquette to get the win. I think it's a squeaker. I think we're going to lose by four on the road. Hopefully I'm wrong because I really think we need this win. All right, fellas. One name I just want to say we haven't mentioned. I'm looking for a bounce-back game from Sam Hauser. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was just about to mention that. Him him and Haney. Haney struggled in his last few uh games against against quality competition. So I wanna s he's been very good defensively, but his offense hasn't been there. So yeah, him and him and Hauser are looking for kind of bounce back performances. And shout out to Reinhardt for only taking six shots in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> Missed all four of his threes though. Progress. That's right. With regard to Hauser, he's he's gonna be back. I, I, I have no doubt that he'll be back in a big way and and, and can't wait to see when that game comes. All right, folks, that's that's going to do it for us here uh, at the Real Chili Podcast. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. We'll be back in 2017, finally. 2016 will be over. We'll talk to you next time here on the Real Chili Podcast. Onions! Basketball in Newark, New Jersey on New Year's Day. Off to Jersey. Jersey. Taking the NJ Transit, getting dropped off at the doorstep. Ain't nothing like it, let me tell you what.